Thanksgiving uh, season, all right, all right. there's nothing better that you can give to our king than yourself. And I'm going to tell you how you prepare yourself as a gift to our king is that you wrap yourself with praise and worship. You wrap yourself with praise and worship. And then you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and this is your reasonable service did anybody come to present themselves when we come to present ourselves as living sacrifices unto God that means that we've already done a self examination the word tells us let a man examine himself did anybody examine themselves on the way to the house of the Lord? What is my agenda as I'm coming into his presence? I always have an agenda when I come into his presence. It is to receive his presence. Amen? It's to come and let us adore him. It is to come and to hear something from him that will help me to draw closer to him. I don't know what it was about this morning, but I felt a supernatural shifting in this place. A supernatural shifting in this place. There was, a, there was an atmosphere that changed in this place, and it just came from people willing to worship people willing to just bless God with expectation and when we praise God with expectation we know that he can do exceedingly and abundantly but if you already came with an abundant expectation how much more will the manifestation be is anybody ready for an encounter on this morning anybody ready for an encounter on this morning Father, we want an encounter on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must, amen, I got to be obedient. Come here, Sandra. Amen. Amen. Pastor Catherine. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Put your right hand over her throat. Father God, in the blessed name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we come to you, Father. We surrender this vocal cord, this voice, the windpipes, the throat axe, everything attached to it. We surrender this under your divine power and your divine capability. It will not restrain her. It will not withhold her. It shall be restored. 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 Not in part. Even above fullness. But Father God, we're expecting better better than ever before father god as she strained to give you praise on this morning now ease her speech ease her singing we pray for deliverance over this struggle that's been for quite some time Father God, we pray for, Father God, for, for, for uh, uh, this healing to be complete, Father God. That it will not raise back up and be the infrequent nuance that she's become accustomed to, Father God. But we're praying for a supernatural release out of relationship, out of obedience, out of faith. By your faith, be ye made 
whole. Somebody give God praise all over this place. bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Feel the needs of your people, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Amen. We know we have some out with some uh, flu symptoms and bugs. We pray for them as well and for God to absolve those things and to help them be well, Father God. Also feel led this morning, Brother Doug. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Bishop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would just place your hands on his head, both hands on his head. The mind that troubles, the mind that troubles, knowing the word as you know the word, but the mind that troubles, we come against every outside influence of the word of God. Father God, as the bishop has his hands on your servant's head, we pray that his thoughts be sealed in the Holy Ghost. This will not be a leaky vessel, nor will it be inundated by fear, fears of inability, fears of season. But we ask, Father God, that you literally on this morning change his mind. Not that he isn't a servant, Father, but change his mind from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We call it done. Done. Brother Doug, I need you to decree done. I need you to decree done. Brother Doug, I need you to decree done. 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 In Christ Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise all over this place. Woof. My, 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 my. He is here. And we bless his holy name. I'm not in any particular rush this morning. Is it all right to worship him just a little while? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have such a great expectation. You have done great things. 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 You have done. I want you to go in your mind right now and begin to consider the great things that God has done for you. He has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's a great thing. While we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for the ungodly. That's a great thing. He gave us the opportunity where if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead by his father. That's a great thing. The mere truth that you arise this morning, you had the ability to open your eyes. That's a great thing. If you're able to stand on your feet, assisted or unassisted, that's a great thing. Because you have breath in your body, that's a great thing. Because you have your right mind, that's a great thing. Because you have activity of your limbs, that's a great thing. Because you have great hairs in your head, that's a great thing. Because you got eyesight in either of your eyes, that's a great thing. Because you can hear the word of God, that's a great thing. Anybody know my God that have done great things? You've done great things. And we bless your holy name. Come on all around this building. Give our God a great big praise. Hallelujah. I hear in the spirit, I hear in the spirit, no let down. Yes, yes, sir. I hear in the spirit, yes, sir, no let down. You believe before and it hasn't happened for you. So sometimes you felt like you were let down. I'm here to declare and decree in this house on today. The spirit of the Lord says, no let down. He says, depend on me. No let down. Is anybody excited about that? Somebody cry in this house. No let down. No let down. No let down. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. <laughs> oh, stay with me. Hallelujah. Woo! I don't know why my ear is so sensitive this morning, but here's a word for somebody else. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. Mm, it's got to register to you. I can't tell you everything. It's got to register to you. I mean, God is not unclear. God is not uncertain. God is not the author of confusion. But somebody need to hear that. Somebody need to hear that. I don't need you to wave your hand and say that you're a witness. I know somebody need to hear that. I'm on the way. 
I'm on the way. Don't you worry about it. I'm on the way. They not going to leave this earth without knowing me. I'm on the way. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. We bless God for all that are in attendance on today. The bishop, amen. Pastor Catherine, amen. Our musicians, amen. Uh, the alarm, the praise team on this morning. We give God glory for the exhorter on this morning. Amen. Exhorting through a strain in her voice, but she still gave God the praise, amen. But I believe, I believe, I believe, not that she will be healed. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't. I believe that she is healed. The Bible says we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. That means that you don't have to wait on that. That means that as soon as you understand that, it's as soon as you receive that. All right, I got to get this word. I got to get it. I got to get it. Amen. Praise God all over this building one more time. All right. All right. Grab your Bibles. On today, I want to say, grab your word. Turn with me, if you would. I want you to turn with me to two places. The first place I want you to turn with me today is John chapter 1. Gospel of John chapter 1. And I also want you to grab Isaiah chapter 9. Once you have both of those, say, I got the word. John 1, Isaiah 9. John 1 verse 1 reads this. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God drop down to the 14th verse the 14th verse says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and mercy, the word was made flesh. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter number 9. Verse 6 says this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and the peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it, and a to establish it with judgment and with judgment from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Verse 8 says this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. I said he sent a word into Jacob and it had lighted up upon Israel. The word was made flesh. A child is born. A son is given. Word was born. A message is given. You can take your seats. Hallelujah. 
Your message entitlement on this morning is simply, word is born. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 21 tell us about Joseph who was betrothed to Mary. And Joseph finds Mary pregnant. I want you to put yourself in a situation of Joseph who does not yet know that Mary has been impregnated by the Holy Ghost. But Joseph is a decent man. We can literally talk for hours and tell you about the many attributes and the father nature of Joseph. But Joseph is a man of decency. And Joseph is a private man. So what Joseph decides to do instead of put Mary on blast for that which he supposes because surely Joseph knows that Joseph has not touched Mary. So Mary's been touched by somebody. Mary's been touched by a man. Mary's been touched by a man. But Joseph doesn't know which man has touched Mary. He hasn't been given the information yet, but he decides to be private. Now, some people are already like, hold on, what man touched Mary? See, because oftentimes we don't understand that the Holy Spirit is not an it. He is a he. So she is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But Joseph does not yet notice. Joseph decides that he is going to put away Mary privately. Because he's a private man. We couldn't, this, the, I, don't, I don't know if Christ could be born in this era. Everybody on Facebook would have already known because Joseph would have blasted out and said, I don't believe that this girl that I was going to marry to, I thought that she was a virgin, but I found her pregnant. And I know it wasn't me. And then a whole another type of gospel could be spilled before the truth came out. But Joseph is a man of decency and he's a man of privacy, so he decides to put away Mary privately before he's told by an angel of the Lord. He is told Mary is going to conceive this child. And upon conception of this child, this child is to be given a name called Yeshua. That's Jesus. One and the same, amen. So, they say name of Jesus. They say name of Jesus for he shall save his people. Not he might, he shall save his people. So call his name Jesus because he's going to save his people. So this is when word is conceived for the second time. The first conception of the word was in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. We see another conception. We see a birth in the physical form, if you would, in a natural element when the Holy Spirit impregnates Mary. Now, we're in a holiday season that is heralded as the most wonderful time of the year, I would that we would really regard it as the most wonderful time of the year and we would regard every opportunity that we have a chance to be alive and breathe with this air that he has given us as the most wonderful time of the year because the Bible simply tells us one thing that his name shall be called wonderful. Right. Now for many of the Christian faith this is the, se the season for celebrating the birth of Christ. Now, birth dates are significant. Now, in our culture, the Western culture, and many other cultures, birthdays are very significant, and they are celebrated. So birthdays are very significant. But birth is even more significant. Anybody, anybody get what I'm saying? Birth is even more certificate. I want you to note something, that the lack of historical documentation does not negate the actuality of an occurrence. It does not do so. Lineage is evidence enough. 
You don't know how you don't have to know the birth date of your father's fathers, father's fathers, father's fathers to understand that one day he was born. So the date is not as, is as important as the occurrence. What's important is the occurrence because we don't historically really know what day he's born if we do any kind of research and kind of fact finding. This season wouldn't be an opportune time for shepherds and things to be heard in their flocks. So uh, we don't want to uh, take it there. If you want to uh, signify and notarize this time as his time of birth, well, that's fine. But understand the importance is not the date. It's the occurrence. Somebody say the occurrence. Now, where there is birth, there is new life. Every, nobody's been upset with a baby. When a baby, well, and if you got a rational mind, once a baby is born, everybody is happy. Everybody wants to hold a baby. Everybody wants to touch the baby. Everybody wants to hear the baby cool. So everybody can say, ah. Oh. We start putting out silly things like, I got a love affair. <laughs> Why? Because you find yourself in love again. You see life. You see rebirth. Why? You see this little child. You see innocence. You see potential. Amen? Birth gives us that thing where we say, okay, like everything's all right for a little while. Everything's all right because this child, even though they have no idea the pressures and the situations that they have been birthed into, at this moment, it is precious, it is pure, it is perfect. Because all the baby wants to do is receive love. All the baby wants to realize is love. All the baby wants to do is be carried. I don't know if you heard me yet. I said all the baby wants to do is to be carried and to be nurtured so that it can grow up and become a part of our lives. Amen. Everybody pays attention to the baby. You're going somewhere with this shortly. New life brings love. It brings joy. It brings hope and it brings energy. For some reason, when we see babies, all of a sudden we got energy. We want to carry the baby around. We want to play with the baby. You will play with a baby for hours. Trying to entertain and make the baby smile. One of the best things in life to do is to make a baby smile and to hear a baby laugh. Everybody love a baby giggle. Amen. But again, the important things about the baby is the birth is the occurrence, ladies and gentlemen. Now, once we acknowledge that Christ indeed was born, then we can recognize also that he lived. And we can also understand and recognize that he died. He rose, he ascended, and as the old church would say, he's yet alive. I want to talk to you today about three elements, if you will. Three elements. Y'all ready? The three elements I want to talk to you today about is, or rather, the star, the star, the tree, the gifts. The star, the tree, the gifts. And we're going to talk about Christ's mass. We're going to talk about the Christmas season. Then we got to talk about the star, the tree, and the gifts. Now, the star. Christ's birth is heralded in a cosmic kind of way. Now, the wise men came to Jerusalem, and they came looking, saying, Who? Or where is he that is born king of the Jews? Where is he? We have seen his star in the east. Now the star in the east is widely known as the star of Bethlehem. Now many uh, have begun to think that this star was a supernova. Now the meaning of nova is simply new. 
So, yes, the full meaning of supernova would be the super new. The super new. Now, symbolically, the, the supernova represents power, brilliance, mystery, and celestial birth. It is literally awe-inspiring. Sila. It is literally awe-inspiring. So our Savior's birth is heralded in the cosmos. There's a star that appears just to signify his birth. Somebody say the super new. The super new. This is why the magi had to pay such attention to it because it was super new. I saw a star in the east and I was drawn to it. And the point is, this has to tell you that the story of our Savior goes even outside the realm that it was in. The Magi come from a different land, a distant land, and say, where is the king of the Jews? Yeah. Oh, my. Hmm. Now, during the holiday season, stars are often placed at the pinnacle of trees, decorative trees. We call them Christmas trees. But let's talk about the tree. Y'all all right? The tree. Christ's death came by the way of a tree. Now, this tree was not decorated in the conventional sense, but rather it was drenched with the blood of sacrifice. Now, we realize as believers that our gifts are not under a tree. Our gifts were not under a tree. Our gift was hung on a tree. Our gift was hung on a tree. If you will follow me to Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, begin to talk about that the tree, actually, we talk about gifts being under a tree, but first came the curse. First came the curse. Christ was made a curse for us. It is written Cursed is everyone who hangs from a tree. This is what Galatians tells us. Now, it tells us that this was done that the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. The seed of Abraham was the seed from God. The seed from God is a seed for man. The son of God is the son of man. I'm going somewhere. The son of man is a seed to God. I want to give you that one more time. The seed of Abraham was a seed from God. The seed from God is a seed for man. The son of God is the son of man. The son of man is a seed for to God. Now, it is said that this was done that we might receive the promise. The promise of spirit through faith. Thusly being made a curse for us. Christ was made a gift to us. When Christ, uh, we talk about the birth and we talk about the nativity and we talk about him being raised and then at the age, at the young tender age, 12 and uh, his preteens and he's confounding the wise. And then he goes on to Calvary and he's placed on this tree. He's placed on a tree and he becomes a gift to us. So our tree, ladies and gentlemen, though some may erect trees in their living rooms, our tree was on Calvary. Our gift is of promise. Our promise is a promise of life. What better gift can be given than the gift of life? New life. New life. Amen. Let's talk about gifts. The gifts. Christ's gift was his birth. His life. His death. His resurrection. His ascension. Christ gave us a whole lot of gifts, y'all. Because first, he's literally the gift to the world. You know, some people walk around like they the gift to the world. 
But he literally, <laughs> he literally was the gift to the world. You ever see, yeah, anybody ever know one of the people that act like they're the gifts to the world? They God's gift to the world. Everything got to revolve around them. But he was the gift. He is the gift to the world, amen, at his birth, through his life, through his death, his resurrection and ascension. James 1 tells us something very powerful in verse 17. It says, every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning of his own will. He begot us. Hold on, wait a minute. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Of his creatures. The word was made flesh. The flesh was made a curse. The curse was broken. The son was given the gift of God. Good will towards all men we you and I were begotten with the word of truth the same word was in the beginning the same word that was in the beginning was with God and was God the same word was made flesh the same word was sent into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. What am I trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen? That when word was born, literally a change had come. The word tells us that he sent a word into Jacob. Now, if we look at this from a spiritual perspective, Jacob is the, form, is, the, is the former man. He's the man that we come from. He's who we used to be before God changed us. When God changes us, he gives us a new identity because he doesn't want you to have an old identity. They used to call the old Jacob, you're a supplanter, you're a trickster, you're a conniver, you're a thief. You stole the birthright. No, I understood the value of the birthright. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. What would you do to get the birthright? Would you sell your birthright to feed your soul? Hold on, wait a minute. Would you sell your birthright to feed your soul? See, this is what uh, uh, Esau does. He's hungry. He's parched. You know, nowadays we would say he's thirsty. Esau is a thirsty individual. He's thirsty and he's hungry. And so his brother takes opportunity to be like, well, if you want me to feed now, you got to understand who Esau was. Esau is a hunter by nature. That is what he's good at. If Esau needed to go eat something, he could have easily went out and hunted and got his own food. But because Esau was what was it, though he had an ability, though he had an ability, what was presently in, was in front of him, was more uh, applicable than that he was able to get of his own. He could have went out and got his own food and kept his birthright for all uh, intents and purposes, but instead he was like, you know what, this is right here, and I value my hunger over my birthright. Now, you can look at Jacob, if you want to, or uh, Israel, or you can look at Israel, rather, as uh, uh, the trickster. I choose to look at um, Esau as the fool. Because you are fool, if you are fool enough to give away your birthright for that which will only temporarily satisfy you, then you don't value that which you've been given. And what happens is Christ has given us this life. What are we doing with this life to say that we value it? Are we just trying to feed ourselves every time we are hungry? Or are we trying to achieve and take in the birthright? Because when Jacob, Jacob does some shady stuff now, he does. But Jacob has an understanding about the value of a birthright. So when the word says to us that he sent a word to Jacob, and he does this, this, is hap this happens several times in Scripture. When you see Jacob and you see Israel in the same passage, that means that a transformation is happening. So he sent a word into Jacob. And it lighted upon Israel. Anybody glad that God sent a word into Jacob? 
If God didn't send the, the, the scripture that we use so many often times while we were yet sinners, Jacob, Christ died for the ungodly. So what he does is he sends the word into and puts it into the presence of the sinner. Now what the sinner does with the word is what will change their identity because we once were sinners. You cannot call me a sinner. I don't practice sin. Do I still sin? If you say that you're without sin, then you are a liar. That's the, what the text tells us. I didn't say I was without sin. I said that I'm not a sinner. I don't practice sin. Some of us are practicing sin. It's a mild practice. We practice sin. Some people practice adultery. Some people practice uh, a larceny and they steal whatever have you, steal intellectual property, steal actual property, steal real estate property, steal time. Some of us still kill, not kill physically with knives or guns or anything like that, but to kill with your mouth, character assassination. So some of y'all, some of us were former murderers, but some of us still murdering folk. We got some serial killers in the church. Hopping from congregation to congregation, from congregation to congregation, leaving behind a litany of bodies, church hurt. But I'm glad on this morning that God sent a word into that trickster. I'm, God, I'm glad that God sent a word into that supplanter. I'm, God, I'm glad that God sent a word into that deceitful person. And he changed their identity when he sent a word to them. And when we receive the word just like Jacob, sometimes we got to wrestle with it. So when he sends us the word sometimes, anybody ever wrestle with the word? You saw the truth. You knew it was the truth, and you couldn't handle the truth. And the truth began to handle you. But you want to get, you want to win so bad. Anybody ever want to win with the word? I'm not talking about win because the word calls us to have victory. I mean, you literally want to win with the word. You want to make sure that whatever you was doing was self-justified. And so you try to find the Bible to self-justify whatever you was doing. And that ain't none of y'all. But then when you found the truth and you did enough study, you will find that I wasn't right. The word is right. And so what sometimes the word would do, even when we wrestle with it so hard, we might get a good hold on it. But then what it might do is displace that hip. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. But once that displacement happens in our body, that means that there's time for God to heal it. Now, I don't think that y'all heard me. The displacement that happens in our bodies orders our steps. My God, the displacement that happens in our bodies orders our steps because before, uh, before, before his hip was displaced, he wasn't walking quite right. I don't think that you heard me. Before his hip was displaced, he wasn't walking quite right. So what happened is the angel displaced it. He dislocated his hip. But then when that hip was uh, fully healed, he began to, his steps began to be ordered in the steps of the Lord. Does anybody hear me on today? So I'm glad that he sent a word into old Jacob. And then it lighted upon Israel. Now Israel is his chosen people. Do I have anybody who's chosen out there? That means that you're one of the few because he says many are called but few. That means that you're uniquely, wonderfully, beautifully made. That means that you got to fit the body just right. That's why he called you. Amen? But all these things will happen, and it lighted upon Israel. It changed. It transformed Israel. So when word was born, uh, let's go before word was born. Let's go before word was born. In the beginning, somebody say in the beginning, in the beginning. Was, the word. was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. I don't think that you're hearing the text correctly. I said in the beginning. The word was with God, and the word was God. I said the word was with God. If the word is with God, it's not yet with mm. I said the word was with God, and it was not yet with mm. I said the word was with God, it's not yet with us. So what he wanted to do was the word to become with us. And so he sent the word 
Amen. He sent the word to perform. I said he sent his word to perform. So he sends his word into Mary. And as he's sending, he sends his son into the womb of Mary, the world was going through a, a moment, a season of travail. Because the world had begun to cry out for a savior. Because we needed somebody to save us from ourselves. There's a period of a space of about 400 years between the text of the Old Testament and the text of the New Testament. There's a period of silence where the voice of God is not being heard as it was in, in former times and things begin to get bad. And, and now the people of Israel is some what, forgot about the teachings of God and they were strayed from God and, and, and they begin to cry because now they're under persecution. So they're in a season of travail. They're under, people, they're under somebody, and they're like, oh, we want a savior. Now, some of their thought patterns were they wanted a king. They wanted a king like David. David is the famous king of the Israelites. They want a king like David. So when Jesus steps up on the scenes, that's who they wanted to be. They wanted to be a king like David. Now, you know, David was a warrior. David was a warrior. David slays bears, lions, tigers, and bears, and giants. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted a, they wanted a giant slayer, and Rome was a giant, and that's what they wanted. They wanted a, a giant slayer, not necessarily for the salvation of their soul, but for the salvation of their skin. And this is exactly what we're going through today somewhat in modern churches. We want God to save our hearts. Some people only came to salvation because we asked God to save our hide. Because we were in a situation that we couldn't get out of. You know, most people, when they tell you their testimony of salvation, I was in a rut. I was down in a low place. I was all the way down. But then Jesus. And that might have been where you found him, but that's not the only way that he works, ladies and gentlemen. But what was happening in the world is people are in travail and they're, one, they're needing a the Savior. And here he comes into the world. A celestial sign is put in the sky. Magi, wise men come. Wise men come where the king is. I don't know if you hear me yet. I said wise men will come where the king is. And these wise men bring gifts. Now, because there are three gifts listed, this is why we always associated with three wise men. We don't know how many wise men it was. Some of the gifts that they got was frankincense, myrrh, and gold, right? Why? Because they're not gifting an infant, y'all. That was not what they were gifting. They were gifting, they were paying homage to the king. I like to believe that they was paying tithe. The king is here. I got to bring my tie. Amen. So they bring the tie. But when, it, but when the word really gets to Israel, after the lead's been displaced and all that good stuff that we was talking about, when the word really gets to Israel, things begin to change because the people that begin to receive God understand that not only is he able to change those things that are of our flesh, the woman with the issue of blood, the man with the withered hand, the blind man, the lame man, not only is he able to change those things, but he's able to literally change our lives. By having one simple thing that he gives us. Faith. Amen. Hmm. So the word is born. And then we are begotten by the word of truth. So when we're looking at. So when we're looking at Christ's birth, we also have to look at our own birth. Not in the natural, but in the spiritual. Amen? Somebody say it's your birthday. The reason why we can all celebrate Christ's birth whenever it may have historically happened is because the occurrence of us reminds us of the time that we will rebirth. I know that my natural birthday is on February the 2nd. But I'm even more happy about my spiritual birthday, which is in October. 
Amen? So when we begin to think about when we were reborn, anybody remember the day that they accepted God as their Savior? If you go back and begin to remember and recall the time that you uh, accepted Christ as your Savior, you remember a time of innocence. Oh, my God. You remember a time of newness. You remember a time of energy because when you first got saved, what happened? You was on fire for God. Couldn't nobody stop you want to tell it. Didn't even, didn't, couldn't rub two scriptures together and go, want to go run and tell everybody that you knew. Come see a man that told me everything I've ever done. You became an evangelist day one. Somebody say, but then you grew up. And just like, just like Christ is notified and heralded at his birth, we don't hear about Christ again until he's 12 years old. I don't think that's by mystery. I think it's by design because that is exactly how we, raise, how, how, how we go through the church. Now we forget those times of raising that Jesus, even in his infinite power, being all 100% God and 100% man, had to allow himself to be obedient to Joseph in the earthen realm. He has to be in here. Had, Jesus had curfew, y'all. You got to be in by this and my time. So he has to go through these growing up stages and what you and I need to realize in this season and every season that we have to go through stages as well. Not, let's just not get stuck on the birth. Let's, let's be happy and celebrate the birth. Thank you, God, that you sent your son who was born of a woman. Thank you, God, that he came into this earth. Thank you, God, for the, for the star shining in the east. Thank you, Lord. But what about the man? How do we get from the baby to the man? How do we go literally from boys to men? This is what this season needs to focus upon. Not that just we give gifts at this time of year, but we continue to raise our children and to raise our spiritual children throughout the year. So they're not just focused on one part of the year, but they're focused on a lifestyle. Because what happens is lifestyle changes in this season. People change in this season. People that are nasty and ugly and curt, all of a sudden want to be sweet and nice because it's the most wonderful time of the year. That means to tell me something that, oh my goodness, I'm about to offend somebody. But that tells me this, that this is not the most wonderful time of the year, more so than it's the most phony time of the year. You wasn't acting like that in January. You wasn't acting like that in March. Why are you acting like that now? Your season's messed up. I thought it got cold in December. You acting cold in July. Oh, but then again, they have Christmas in July too, right? Anyway. The rest of the time, you were acting like someone else. You were acting like Jacob. And now all of a sudden, you transform during the holiday season. Uh, I think it's been said this way before, but I say it again. Sometimes I think that we use holidays as hell I day. Hell me day. You know, hell me day. Yes. That's how we treat it. I got to take time for myself. I got to do things for myself. Instead of uh, using the time properly, uh, the time that has been given to us, they give you days off, they give you time off, and we, the people are stressing, people are killing themselves, people are running themselves into debt. For what? What changed in this season? What changed in this season? I'm going to tell you what changed. A word was sent to you. A marketing word was sent to you. And the marketing word told you to go out there and to spend all your money. And you followed the word. Right to all of those stores. Taking your pictures with somebody who doesn't exist. 
sending cards to propagate this message to everyone that you know. Now, I'm not trying to come against your traditions because some people are going to get offended up, 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 mad with me. But what I'm saying is, is, is that we are king in on this season, ladies and gentlemen. And we are now hailing it as Christmas, and people are mad when they call it Xmas. It doesn't bother me. Amen. It doesn't bother me at all. Because uh, I don't know who birthday y'all celebrating. So to me, it can, it can work at X means, because X means, X is a factor that means unknown. And some of us celebrate it like we don't know who we serve. Some of us are celebrating this as if we don't know who we serve. If you want to celebrate a day, a birthday, a holiday, fine. Go celebrate it. But don't make it about something fictitious, ladies and gentlemen. Make it about the truth. Truth of the matter is, I have birthday parties for my little ones, right? I celebrate their life. And that's fine if you want to pick a date to, to, to celebrate the life of Christ and focus on it, fine. But the onus has to be a lifestyle and not a day. We've made Sunday a day. Some of us have made Sabbath day a day. We made that a day, the only day, when we celebrate God. Some people be like, oh, I just can't wait to get next Sunday. I can wait to get the next Sunday. I can wait to get next Saturday because I'm praising God all the time. Right. Sabbath for me happens to be the day that I gather with others and we celebrate together. But let me tell you something. If, one of, uh, if, if, if any one of you call me on any day, we can celebrate right then. You can call me on a Thursday or Wednesday or Tuesday and we can celebrate life right there. Amen. So what am I saying? Stop focusing on the day and change your lifestyle. Realize that when word was born, it was sent into Jacob. Word was sent into a sinner man to transform him into a godly man. So if you're going to receive a word in this season, receive a word that doesn't transform you for a day. Receive a word that doesn't transform you for a day. Receive a word that transforms you for life. Receive a word that transforms and renews your mind. And then you can make a declaration that word is born. Because when word is born, then word also has to grow. When word is born, then that means word has to be carried just like a baby. Word has to be nurtured just like a baby. But then something else has to happen to make sure that that baby gets to his purpose. Because when God sent his word to do his performance, he sent his word with a purpose. There's not a child born in this earth without purpose. Children are a gift from God. They are a heritage from God. So when God, think about this, God gave us his own heritage. And though we are not mindful and we don't have the exact of the date, the date is not as important as the occurrence. Because lineage, ladies and gentlemen, is evidence enough. What is your lineage? What is your lineage? What kind of legacy will you leave for your children? One that is focused upon gifts being under a tree? Or one that focuses on a gift that was hung on a tree? One that focuses on a star in the sky that told the magi that the king is here. One that says he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. The word was made flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld him as the only begotten of the father. Full of grace. Full of potential. So at the point of birth Ladies and gentlemen, as I close here, at the moment of birth, we see potential. At the moment of birth, we see life. 
But think about life, not just do life, but life that is going to serve a purpose. What purpose is your life serving, ladies and gentlemen? Have you truly received the word? Have you realized that word is born? Not only has word been born, but he lived. He died. He rose. He ascended. And when he ascended, he left us with a gift. The very self-same gift that impregnated Mary. I don't think that y'all heard me yet. I don't, I don't think that you hear me. I don't think that you hear me. I don't, think I, I don't think that you hear me. I said that when he went and ascended, he left us the, same, the self-same impartation that impregnated Mary. Mary's impregnation brought about the Savior of the world. Once you receive his Holy Spirit, you receive male, female, it is irrelevant because we are all the brides of Christ. Once you receive the word, once word is, 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 is conceptualized, you have to have intimacy. And then it becomes in your womb. And what happens is when it becomes in your womb, then you realize at that very moment that you are fruitful. And then you can follow an old commandment where he says, be fruitful. And I don't think that y'all hear me yet. I said, be fruitful. And most, I don't think that y'all hear me yet. I don't know if I'm preaching it like I want to preach. I said to be fruitful and to multiply. So he goes up in the sky like a star. And he leaves us with a gift, the self-same gift that, it, I don't, man, the self-same gift that impregnates Mary has now been made possible for us so that we can carry him on the inside. So that we can carry him on the inside. And at the appointed time, somebody say the appointed time. At the appointed time, not only will word be born in us, but now it can be rebirthed into somebody else. It can be planted into somebody else. Has word been born in you, ladies and gentlemen? Have you been fruitful and have you multiplied? Or did you just have your day? Have you been fruitful and multiplied or you just had your day? And once a year, every year, you celebrate your day. When the day was never about you. No day was ever about you. Every day should be about him. I'm not going to say that it is because for everybody it isn't. But every day should be about him. Don't you waffle because he doesn't do lukewarm. He spits it out because he can't do anything with it. Don't be double-minded. Double-minded meaning one month out of the year you're kind and 11 months out of the year you're confused. you moody. You got attitude problems. Don't let this season change who you're supposed to be. If you're going to start from this season, it's a good place to start. Somebody say it's a good place to start. So if your understanding of Christ starts on the 25th of December, and you decide to celebrate the birth of Christ on the 25th of December, I want you to take that date and now make it not about what the world has told us, but I want that to become, if you don't know Christ, or you need to be reintroduced to Christ, or you need to be a rededication, I want that to become your new date of birth. But you ain't got to wait till the 25th. You can have it right now. You can have it right now. Somebody say, don't wait till Christmas. <laughs> say, don't wait till Christmas. 
Don't just show up to church on Christmas. Don't just show up to church on Easter. Show up to church because there's a call on your life. Show up to church because there's a purpose on your life. Show up to church because word has been born. He was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And he lived. He died. He rose. He ascended. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. Self-same spirit which impregnated Mary now can be on the inside of our room where we need to be fruitful and multiply. Can anybody in this house say word is born? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Or are you going to just celebrate it in its infancy? Or are you going to raise it into purpose? My God, I feel that. Or are you going to just care for it in infancy? Or raise it to the purpose? To the purpose? To the purpose? Somebody give God glory all over this building. Somebody say, to the purpose. What's the purpose of the tree in your house? What's the purpose of the gifts underneath the tree? What's the purpose of the star on your tree? What is the purpose of the stockings on your fireplace? What is the purpose? As you're filling your stockings, as you're wrapping your boxes, what's the purpose? See, when my present came to this world, he wasn't wrapped until they took him off the tree. He wasn't wrapped until they took him off the tree. And when the gift was open, Three days later, he left the wrapping in the grave. Yeah. Bible tells me that he rose with all power in his hand. To the purpose. To the purpose. To the purpose. My God. Y'all enjoy that? Give God praise all over this place. <laughs> Unto us a child is born. And a son is given. That's the gift. That's the gift that we all need to receive. Is him. I just can't get off this. Don't change just because this is the season that somebody else dictated. We can't be going in and out of this stuff 11 months out of the year acting and cussing each other out and being nasty to each other. And then all of a sudden, that's, that's like a sign of schizophrenia or something. I mean, you crazy or uh, you ain't balanced. You bipolar or something like that. I'm not making fun of the, uh, the, the illness, but I'm just saying. Making, not making light of the, the illness, but I'm saying. And some of us act like there is, there is no spiritual bipolar now. You believe or you don't. I think I've done what I was called to do. Y'all ready to give y'all offering? 
Amen. As you're uh, preparing your offering, we're just grateful unto God uh, again. Um, those of you that's joining with us, some of the things that we said might have offended some because it seems that we're coming against traditions or whatever have you. I'm not telling you to take the tree down out of your house. That's not, that's not up to me. That's between you and God. I'm not telling you to stop putting lights up on your house. I didn't say for you to celebrate a certain time of year. You celebrate your children's birth. You celebrate Christmas. Nothing, no things are wrong with those things, but don't displace and misplace our relationship with Christ. Our relationship with Christ is to be focused upon year-round. Amen? Amen? And I would admonish you that there are specific times, appointed times, more deemed times, where there is an emphasis put on days. But these are not ordained by history. These are ordained by God. And even in those days, though we are ordered to acknowledge those days, even those days can't supplant relationship. Amen? Relationship must be continuous. Amen? Relationship must be continuous. Because on the day that relationship stops being continuous, then there is divorce. Amen. Amen. A few more writing. Uh, as a matter of fact, Brother David, could you help us out with the, uh, the visual? Oh, you got it? Amen. Well, as we're getting ready to sign off, ladies and gentlemen that are watching us online again, we hope that you've heard a word from on high, some things that are... Uh, been illuminated upon your mind, some revelation, and, and some things that we might have known but need reassurance of that in this time where people, some people are recognizing Christ's birth, and that's okay, and that's fine, but let's get to the purpose. The purpose is for us to know him ourselves. We have the same self-capability of holding Christ on the inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And in him, we breathe, we move, we have our very being. So on behalf of all of us here at New Hope in Christ, we do want to wish you a happy holiday. But don't misplace the holiday. Don't get stressed out. Don't find yourself in a rut because you may not be able to give all the gifts that you want. Is gift giving wrong? Gift giving is never wrong. You can give gifts whenever you want to. But there's a problem when doing that overrides the very safety of sanctity in your mind to where people are considering taking themselves out of this world because they can't meet what's not even a need. So we do want to bid you a happy holiday. Hope that you celebrate. Hope that you have a good time, that you're with your family, and it's time that we can be with family. But as you're with your family, have some real prayer. Have some real uh, discussions about Christ and begin to try and have this uh, transformation go into your life and stay with your life. I know I'm giving you a lot on today and that's all right. That's just what I feel. All right. This is what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Don't let this season change you. Stay where God has called you to be so that you can get to the purpose where he has called you to. He birthed his son for a purpose. His son has served his purpose and is still serving his purpose. You and I have a purpose as well. <clears throat> Let's do it and do it in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So on behalf of all of us here at New Hope, we would like to bid you shalom. One way. We'll see you next time.